In this section, the third section, I want to use two examples that we're very familiar with, that we're probably immersed in, to explore the idea of governing through technical objects in more detail. I want to use the example of self-service and cling film and how do these two examples show how plastic governs us. Now there's been lots of wonderful uh, historical analyses of the rise of self-service and in the 1930s and the way in which it transformed retail spaces, retail work and also the, the activity of shopping. Now what all these analyses show is that uh, packaging was a central element in this profound transformation of consumption. And it was the, the role of the package in being arranged on the shelf and attracting the, the shopper's curiosity, but also allowing the shopper to select for themselves their own item. Um, packaging was central in facilitating that new conduct, that new sense of what we might call regulated freedom in the space of the shop and through the activity of self-service. Now, plastic packaging really intensified this major transformation in consumption. And of course, packaging had already transformed food production, transport and everything else. But I'm just focusing here on consumption and the disposition and conduct of the shopper. So plastic packaging really intensified, as we saw from the Meikle uh, quote in the Second World War period. It just spread through all different sorts of markets and that paralleled the rise of supermarketization, that is the decline of high streets and the growth of large shopping complexes and supermarkets. Now, plastic packaging didn't just intensify our self-service, it also changed it in certain ways. For a start, the specific material semiotics of plastic, that is the fact that it was transparent, meant that it really uh, enhanced the, the consumer's sense of, of being able trans to transparently see exactly what they were getting. So it really enhanced their sense of, of uh, direct access to, to, to the product um, at the same time as reassuring them that there was a barrier that thousands of other shoppers hadn't handled this object before them. The other thing that plastic did was because it was so cheap to produce, because it be, could be stretched and moulded in all different ways, it suddenly led to new things being wrapped that had never been wrapped before because it could take the shape of them. Plasticity, as we know, is the ability to give form and receive form. So plastic was used to, to, to wrap innumerable objects that had not previously been wrapped. And as I've said, the key example here is fruit and vegetables. But the other thing that it did was because consumers now had this disposition, this orientation, this habit towards self-serving themselves, they did want to be sure that what they were picking up was clean and uncontaminated. So wrapping things up that hadn't previously been wrapped, such as fruit and vegetables that were now moved into the supermarket, uh, was, was an effect of this. They moved out of green grocer shops into supermarkets, which meant that they had to um, uh, adapt to the regime, regime of supermarketization and be wrapped in order to reassure and, and confirm the activity of self-service on the part of the consumer in order to facilitate self-service and allow it to uh, expand and um, intensify. Now the other example I want to use is the introduction of cling wrap. You would have seen a couple of slides before this one of early advertisements from the Australian Women's Weekly promoting cling wrap. Now this was a new sort of material it entered Australia in the late 60s and it had to be accounted for as we saw from Woolgar and Nayland. It had to be explained what it was accountable for, how you should respond to it, what it was responsible for was part of the way of kind of ontologically establishing its place in the world. 
but at the same time as cling wrap was accounted for in this way, it also changed the world. Um, what was interesting about cling wrap was that all this early marketing in women's magazines instructed house, housewives that they should use it in order to get the most out of food. So what happened was that food, fresh food was suddenly problematized as vulnerable to decay, um, the efficient economical housewife needed to extend the life of her fresh goods as much as possible. Therefore, cling wrap was the material that would help them um, do that. So what's happening in this sort of new set of relationships whereby plastic is being inserted into the household, into domestic practices, into new relations with food, is that the life of food is being reconstituted. Freshness is being rendered as problematic and, the, and it's being seen as now um, irretrievably connected to and needing plastic. So there's a kind of, kind of transactional accountability relationship being set up here where freshness needs plastic and plastic produces freshness. So they are mutually enhancing and justifying each other. So um, at the same time, what's also happening is that non-plastic storage practices that were already in place in the home, perhaps such as wrapping things in newspaper or putting them in jars, were quietly and subtly being displaced um, as cling wrap began to make a new reality and as cling as cling wrap began to redefine what the life of food was and who should be responsible and how it should be cared for. So self-service and the growth of plastic wrapping and storage in the home are powerful examples of not how only how plastic became implicated in new forms of conduct, but also how it became implicated in new forms of biopolitical governance. The process of making synthetic materials responsible for nature uh, was complex and highly situated. And these examples show how the synthetic and the natural became interconnected and interdependent. How plastic became seen as a necessary skin, not an artificial and chemical imposition. It was only by accounting for plastic and the life of food as fundamentally interconnected and interdependent that the ontology of cling wrap and the agency of this plastic as a preservation device, as an essential material in the household was realised. And realising this kind of agential capacity for plastic packaging was central to provoking changes in household practices and conducts it was central to plastic suggesting to the householder different ways of doing things, different ways of wrapping and managing food in the home. And this is how plastic became a technology of governing, something capable of suggesting and prompting and nurturing new conducts.